Kia ora koutou, and welcome to St Mary's Catholic Parish, Avondale, on the second Sunday of Easter. A warm welcome to all visitors and newcomers, and a special welcome to those viewing this Mass on Shine Television and online. Now my welcome. In an age when faith is becoming more difficult and mystery is on the way out, the Church puts before us the deeply moving encounter between Christ and Thomas, his a doubting apostle. Our celebrant for this Eucharist is our parish priest, Pa Peter Tippini. Please stand and join wholeheartedly in singing our opening hymn. The grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And on the second Sunday of Easter, the much loved gospel of uh, doubting Thomas, and Thomas asked the questions that I'm sure we all would have asked ourselves. And, and terms of who Jesus is as the risen Lord. So let's take a moment now to place ourselves in the presence of our loving God, praying for the gift of his pardon, his healing, and especially for the gift of Easter peace. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who leads us to green pastures. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Kiai noi tato, let us pray. Etiatua Atafai, God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon them, everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread in various houses and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us all recite the psalm together in your leaflet. Let the house of Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice 
with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Kote kupu o te ariki, the gospel of the Lord. Our beautiful gospel we've listened to this morning and the powerful proclamation of Thomas, most powerful proclamation probably made in the gospel, my Lord and my God. It kind of reminds me, I've had the wonderful auntie from the Hokianga, my mother's from a place called Motukraka, and it's a lovely old church built in 1910 that overlooks the Hokianga Harbour and looks across one side to Opononi, the other side to Rawane. And below the church is uh, my mother's marae, people of Ngai Tupoto, and I had this Auntie Irui who lived in Motukraka, well, Tehuahua Valley, really, where my mother grew up too, and it, it, as a young boy, I remember going along to various masses for 
tangi hanger of other occasions. And at the consecration, when the host was lifted up, my Auntie Rui, who was a skinny little lady, she was very, really thin, she was a big smoker, and you know, she was just a real hard case, but she loved, absolutely loved the church. So when the host was, was, was raised up, all you'd hear is this huge thump, like a and the, and this tiny little auntie of mine, we'd all get a big fright, and she said, my Lord and my God, and the chalice would be raised, and my Lord and my God. And as a young boy, I remember being absolutely horrified, thinking, how does she do that without damaging herself? You know, but as years went by, and, and she got older and weaker, and the thumps weren't as hard as they used to be, I still kind of thought, well, isn't that wonderful? Here's a woman of deep faith, that, that my Lord and my God. And it's something every time I hear in the gospel we've listened to today, I'm going to think, what a great proclamation that uh, we can make too, just as Thomas made, just as my auntie Rui we made, and as we continue to be encouraged to make that same powerful proclamation, my Lord and my God. And here's Jesus, and he's appearing a second time to his disciples, and we're told that Thomas hadn't been there the first time, and everybody wonders, well, where was Thomas? You know, why wasn't he there right at the beginning? And the other thing that we find interesting in the other Gospels is we're told that Thomas was a twin. So you kind of think, well, well, why would they have put that information in? That's something quite important, obviously, but we don't know why. Was it a, was it a, a, was it a boy or a girl? Who was it? And you know, what, where was he in the first post-resurrection appearance of Jesus? So all these wondrous questions. But the fact is, he wasn't there. And when, of course, when the apostles say to him, we've seen the Lord, he says, no, 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 no. I won't believe unless I personally can see and touch his wounds. And of course, when he does have the, 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 is able to do that, when Jesus appears for the second time and he offers his hands and his side, he says, here I am, Thomas, touch me. And somehow or other, I think the, Thomas and his doubting, his unbelieving, is something for us, because we who, people who not, have not seen the Lord, who believe, you know, we've given this great promise, as Jesus says, well, blessed are those who haven't seen and yet believe. And he's, he's saying to Thomas, well, you know, you've seen me and you, you still want to touch me, you still want to, you, you still want to go through with this. And so he's really encouraging people of our time, us, to, to, to believe, to be a people of absolute and utter faith. Not only that, but also to be a people who continue the mission of the Lord Jesus. That mission, of course, is to be a people of peace of people who go out proclaiming that Jesus is indeed Lord, of people living just as the Lord Jesus lived, encouraging people to repent, to turn away from sin, and to return back to God. And that's the kind of mission that each and every one of us is given as well. So as we continue our Eucharist today, let's pray in thanksgiving giving for this for the risen Lord Jesus Christ, very much alive and at work through the power of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives, but also pray too that that proclamation that St. Thomas made, my Lord and my God, that proclamation that my aunt beat upon her chest at every Eucharist, my Lord and my God. May we too be a people who solemnly live and proclaim that day in and day out, that Jesus is indeed my Lord and my God. And let's stand now to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We come now before our loving God with prayers for our needs, the needs of the church and our world. For the church, 
that we, who are the church, will be an instrument of peace and an agent of reconciliation to all people. The leaders of nations, that global leaders will strive to establish peace among all peoples and all nations. For the newly baptised, that they will be supported, affirmed, and encouraged by our faith community. For people without adequate housing, that we will work to ensure everybody has access to affordable homes that are warm and dry. For our Divine Mercy Group and all those who have a devotion to the Divine Mercy, that they may grow in a deeper and more charitable faith and a greater and a more merciful love. For those who have died and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, that they may know the fullness of life in Christ. Almighty God, hear and answer all these prayers we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and the wine we offer, fruit of the earth and of the vine, that will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give your heart to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death 
and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious, and all your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
For the coming of the kingdom, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share a sign of that peace with those around us. Behold Jesus, whose body is broken for us, whose blood is the cup of love poured out for us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our celebration has ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.